privilege to have the opportunity to worship God together. Will you join me in the call to worship? Let us stand as we are able. God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. God has made everything and given it to us. Jesus is our redeemer, our savior, and our friend. The Holy Spirit moves in us, brings us together, and guides us in life. Let us share in all of the good gifts of God.
Friends, there are so many times in this life that we would like to do the right thing and we find ourselves doing what we didn't plan to do. This is not a new phenomenon. The Apostle Paul said, when I want to do what is right, I find myself doing exactly the opposite thing. And when I want to not do what is wrong, I find myself exactly right in the middle of it. And he ended that with saying, who will save me from this body of death? And he answers his own question, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is here to save us as well from the sins that would tear us apart and pull us down. In faith and hope, let us confess our sins together. Eternal One, we confess that we are short-sighted. We put ourselves before others and are worried that we don't have enough, while others around us go without. We call ourselves religious, but fail to be concerned for our neighbor. We fear losing what we have rather than living into God's ways and trusting in God's love and mercy. Too often we bury the talents and gifts that you have given to us in the ground instead of using them to further your will. Forgive us for our fears that hold us back from our assumptions that cause us to not see the needs around us and for the times we miss the mark. Call us back into your ways. In the name of Christ, our Redeemer and friend, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, Scripture tells us that if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and may be trusted to forgive us of every kind of wrong. The past is finished and gone. Behold, the new has come. Friends, believe the very good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. To prepare our hearts for the hearing of God's word, let us pray. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen now to a reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the light or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath,
but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live in him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gentlemen and lady. Appreciate it. I'd now like to invite all the children forward for a conversation. Come on down. There's plenty of space up here for everyone. Whoa. Morning, guys. How you doing? I see you already colored your picture. How's everybody doing? Good. It's good to see you this morning. I was going to show you on our bulletin this morning, we have a picture on the front. And you're welcome to do like Hayden. Hayden, you want to show them? You have colored your picture. And you are welcome to color that picture as well. This is a picture from the story that we are preaching on this Sunday. I'll be talking about it more. It's called the Parable of the Talents. And in this parable, Jesus is telling a story about a, a, a man who had three servants and he went away and left his money for them to take care of. But to tell the story to you, I'm going to take a little bit of liberty. Hopefully Jesus is okay with it. And I'm going to tell you the parable of the three toolboxes. See my nice toolbox over here? We're going to talk about this. So there's, there's a story. There's a man who owned a big construction company. And he built all sorts of wonderful things. And one day he realized he had to go away on a long trip. So he called all three of his employees, the guys that worked for him, to come and speak to him. And he said, look, I have a big journey I'm going on, so I'm leaving everything in your care. You're going to run the company for me. 
And so I've prepared a toolbox for each of you. And so, and my son wanders away. <laughs> you see how interested he is in my stories. He said, I've prepared a toolbox just for each of you. And you know what? Each of the three, the three workers had different talents and abilities. And so he had a special toolbox just for each of them. The first one, he left a big toolbox. See, think of one that's five times as big as this. A big toolbox with every tool imaginable that he would need. And he said, I want you to use this to work in the company while I'm away. And the second guy, he gave him a smaller toolbox that had less tools but everything he would need to do what was expected. And then the third, he left an even smaller toolbox. But in that small toolbox, he had everything he would need to do the work. And so the, the gentleman left and went on his journey. And when he came back, he called his three employees to him. And he said, OK, I want you to tell me what you've been up to while I've been away. And so the first guy with the big toolbox came to him and said, I know that you care for those people who have no homes and are homeless. And so while you were away, I used my big toolbox to build homes for all of those who have no homes. And the employer said, that is great news. I'm so excited. And because you did such a good job and used your toolbox, I'm going to put you in charge of the entire company. And isn't that a good idea? Wow. He's getting even more responsibility. And then the second guy, he said, well, I know that you care for the elderly. And so while you were away, I worked in the homes of those people who are unable to fix their homes because they've, they're just, uh, they are not able to anymore. He said, that is great news. I'm going to put you in charge of all of the maintenance and repair for the company. And you get a higher paycheck because of it, too. So he was excited about that. But then he got to the third guy who had the small toolbox, but everything that he would need to do the job. And he said, what have you been doing while I've been away? And the guy said, well, I knew that you had great expectations of me, and I was scared. And so what I did is I put your toolbox in a safe place because I was so afraid I was going to break a tool or maybe lose one and then you would be mad when you returned. And the employer said, that's not why I gave you the tools. I gave you the toolbox so that you would use them, not so that you would hide them away. For that reason, you didn't do what I expected and I'm going to have to fire you. And I'm going to ask you to give your toolbox to the first gentleman because... He did what I expected of him. You know what? God has given each of us a toolbox. Did you know that? You've been given a toolbox. It may not look a lot like this one, but each of us has been given different talents and abilities. You are a very talented group of people, I must say. But you know why God gave you those talents? Do you think God gave them to you so that you would just hide them away and not use them? Do you think that was real? No. God gave you talents so that you would use them for God's purpose and to make God happy as well as to make the world a better place. And so this story is to remind us that God has given us so that we can do what God has asked us to do. So can we promise to use our talents and gifts and discover what those are? Can we do that? Let's do that together. How about we join together in prayer? So will you pray with me? Dear God, you can say it with me. Dear God, Thank you for giving us our toolbox and thank you for trusting us. Help us to use our tools to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. You can head on back to your seat and you can color your picture if you haven't already. Our second scripture lesson this morning is found in the Gospel of Matthew, and I would encourage you to follow along. If you did not bring your own Bible, we have our pew Bibles, and it's found on page 807, 807. We will be in chapter 25, starting at verse 14. So let us listen to the word of the Lord. 
For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and trusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you have handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, "Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents." His master said to him, "Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master." Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance But those who have nothing, even what they have, will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that your spirit would continue to be upon us as we ponder your words to us. As we hear this story, may we be reminded of its meaning. But we need your help. So we pray that you would silence any voice in us but your own. And Lord, I pray that as my words stray from yours, may they fall away and quickly be forgotten. But may your word, your truth, and your promise remain upon our hearts forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This parable, perhaps you've heard it before, perhaps you're hearing it for the first time. This parable happens in the midst of the Gospel of Matthew when Jesus is teaching his disciples about remaining strong and steadfast during trouble. And also there's this returning theme of, I will be going away, but I will return to you. And so here we have this jarring tale. It's a little jarring, is it not? It, it elicits perhaps some emotions within us, perhaps some questions. But we hear about these three servants who receive the talents. We have a master in the story who is the owner of everything and must be an owner of abundance and is going away on a long journey and calls the servants to him and then gives them talents. One the five, then two, and then one. But before we start to feel a little too sorry for the one that just received one talent, perhaps it would help us to understand 
how much a talent truly is. A talent equates to 6,000 denarii, and 6,000 denarii is roughly the equivalent of a day's wage for 20 years. 20 years. Imagine your paycheck times 20. We're talking about an absurd amount of money, even for the one with the one talent. So the one who had the five talents had enough day's wage for a hundred years. We're talking about a lot of money. And the master was generous, leaving it all to their care, each given according to their ability. The master trusted them by entrusting his wealth. So what proceeds is a lesson on investment and return, is it not? Learning about using what we have been given. The first two servants double what they've been given. And so they take an absurd amount of money and make it even more absurd. A massive amount of money, but the one who received the one talent and still received so much buries it in the ground, afraid that he might lose it. So he wanted to at least to be able to give that back to the master. We are told that the master is away for a long time. We are not told for how long. We are just told for a long time the master is away. So the entire time the master is away, these servants are allowed to live with this abundance of wealth to use how they saw fit. The teaching happens when the master returns. The first two are praised for how they doubled the amount and used what they had been given, and they are entrusted with even more. And then they are told, enter into the master's joy. The harsh treatment is reserved for the one who brings his talent still covered in the dirt from the ground in which he buried it. That servant knew what was expected of him. We hear it in his very reply to the master. He knew what was required of him, but yet allowed his fear to motivate him. And so, what he has is taken away and given to the one who has the most, and then he's cast out into the darkness. It's a harsh lesson, is it not? It's a harsh lesson that obviously has an important teaching that Jesus is trying to teach to his disciples and us as hearers today. What are we to glean from it? First, I think we must wrestle with the identity of the master in the story. Who is the master Jesus is speaking of? If we take our cues from the writer of the Gospel of Matthew, it would seem that Jesus is drawn into this allegory. Jesus is the one who throughout the gospel gives in great abundance. And it's Jesus that we are promised will return after being away. And before we judge Jesus too harshly on the harshness, the harshness of the retaliation or the lesson taught to the one, I think we must also couch it in the generosity of the master. Imagine how much trust it took to leave all that was the master's in the care of those servants. And they were allowed to live in that abundance the entire time the master was away, as if it were their own. That is generosity. The thrust of the parable is in the servant's response how they chose to live with what had been entrusted to their care. The first two obviously felt very motivated to further the purpose of the the money, to use it how it was meant to be used, while the one was afraid. So are we really talking about money here? Absolutely. We are talking about money. Believe it or not, the Bible has a lot to say about money. But are we only talking about money? Absolutely not. It's not just about money because God has blessed us 
in so many different ways, financially, physically, mentally, spiritually. God has given much to our care. We are a very, very blessed people. I think we need to hear that more and more. In a day of doom and gloom, we are a very, very blessed people. In the midst of all that we've been through, we are a very, very blessed church. Can you hear that? We are a blessed church. God is in our midst, and God is still blessing us. So how should we respond? Isn't that the question? The big question is how we should respond because God has already given. The Master will return. For now, much has been placed in our care. And with great wealth comes great responsibility. I think I'm quoting Spider-Man there, but that's okay. I believe it. With great power comes great responsibility. But God has given us so much. How are we going to respond? For the Master will return. We were reminded in the Thessalonians passage that you read that Jesus will return. The Master will return. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. It's probably best that we don't know the day and the hour. But Christ will return. And how will we feel when we're called forward? to be accountable to the responsibility we have as believers, as those who have been so richly blessed? Are we prepared to enter into the joy of the Master? That's a great statement. The joy of the Master. That's not just a time to come. That's here and now. The joy happens here and now. Or are we going to continue in fear and allow our anxiety to motivate us? We each carry a wealth beyond our wildest imagination. Isn't it about time we pulled out our shovels and dug it up, dusted off our talents, and started using it for God's purposes? The joy of the Master awaits those who are willing to unearth their talents. The joy of the Master awaits those who are willing to unearth their talents. So let that be us. Let us pray. God, you have given us so much. And you have placed us in a world that needs our talents, that needs our abilities, that needs our resources that you have given to us. And you, would get, you have given to each of us according to our ability, according to how you have created us. So there is enough. There is plenty. May we be motivated by your trust in us and by the joy that awaits us in your presence and not by our fear and not by our anxieties and not by our concerns. Help us to trust in you. What amazing things can happen if we but unearth our talents. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. We have been given so much. And that's why in our worship we have set aside a time for us to offer back to God, to respond to what God has already done. And so with great joy, Let us give back to God what has already been given to us. Would the ushers please come forward?
often fail to realize just how abundant your blessings flow. May these gifts we offer to you in worship be a starting point for us as we unearth the gifts that you have already given so that we might use them to further your will. Amen. Amen. We live with a God who is not only given to us from the beginning, but continues to give and continues to hear every prayer that we would utter. Those prayers upon our lips, those prayers in our hearts, those prayers we just can't yet find words to express. And so we turn to that loving God in prayer now. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us so much. And too often we forget the life of gratitude that we are called into. Not because you deserve our gratitude, but because that is the joy of life that you offer to us. You seek what is best for your people and for your world even though we fail to have eyes to see and ears to hear all that is good. Pour your love continually into us. Allow us to be open vessels so that as you pour into us, we are overflowing out into a world to so many empty vessels, people who need to be filled with your joy. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Healer. We see God most clearly in you. Your concern for neighbor, your concern for us, your willingness to go to the cross on our behalf. May we follow in your path, offering strength to those who are weak, offering hope to those in the darkness of despair, offering healing to those who are wounded. May you be with those members of our church who are in need of your care. May you be with those loved ones in our lives who need your touch. May you be with those people we consider our enemies or our adversaries. May you be with our world, with all of its leaders. May your kingdom continue to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Spirit, we come to you pleading, urging, asking that you would continue to allow your presence to be in our lives in the midst of our ministry here at the church because we cannot do it alone. If we try anything on our own power, we will fail, we will run out. The same goes for our own lives as it does for our church. May we be powered by your spirit, Lord, in your mercy. And finally, great God, hear us as we join our voices as we have in so many times but hopefully with a renewed fervor as we pray the prayers your son Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
So friends, as we leave this place, may God be in your head and in your understanding. May God be in your eyes and in your seeing. May God be in your ears and in your hearing. May God be in your mouth and in your speaking. May God be in your heart and in your knowing. May God be in your coming, but especially in your going. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.